Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Well, 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 you know how it is. You poke the bear and then you're going to find out. The problem is the bear here is going to retaliate, uh, I think, in kind. It keeps, a, it keeps a balance. You say, hey, how is that possible? Well, that's what I think. I think that during this, uh, what, 10-month uh, uh, fight or whatever, it's been almost 11, right? Um, you have a calculated, controlled war between the United States and Russia on the territory of Ukraine. And um, it seems like it's been an escalation each and every day. These guys provide this, these guys, okay, we're going to do this. Oh, we're going to provide more weapons, this kind of weapons. Okay, we're going to this. We're going to bomb your uh, bridge in Crimea. Okay, we're going to fuck up your infrastructure. Oh, you're this, you're this. So it seems like it's going this way. And they, they all claim that, oh, the Russians will use nuclear weapons. And they're threatening to do it, and they're mad, they're crazy, they're whatever. Okay, well, if they were like that, they should have used it, or they would have used it, and the on the 24th of February. The first day, boom, a few nuclear weapons, and wait. Now what? Are, is the West going to do anything about it? I guarantee you they would not have moved a little pubic hair. Okay, nothing. So, let's see what's going on here. If you remember, or maybe if you're aware of it, the United States of America decided to, uh, it's not decided, but it's a done deal, it's, we know it's going to happen. Uh, we'll send Patriot systems, defense air systems, blah, 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 in Ukraine to defend the Ukrainian airspace. Now, those Patriot uh, systems are not, you know, like, oh, we're just going to defend and that's it, that's fine, that's okay, it's good with us. That's a big threat for the Russians. So again, you bring this, oh, what we're going to bring? This is what the Russians are saying here in this article from Associated Press from December 15th. This is the title. Russia warns, quote-unquote, consequences if U.S. missiles are sent to Ukraine. All right, what are the consequences or what could be the consequences? Because the best way in threatening someone is uh, not to give, uh, give up the consequences. If you tell someone, I'm going to come and, I don't know, kick you in the head. No, I, know, I get ready for that. It's going to kick me in the head, it's going to be left or right, let me see, he uses the right leg, so probably it's going to be on my left right here, if he does that, if he does that, I'm going to do this, all right, or I'm going to just move forward, he's going to miss, and so on. So that's why uh, this is the, the, the okay, I'm not gonna, I know what you, I'm going to get ready, that's the basic stuff. If I say, well, I'm going <clears> to <throat> take care of you, oh, what do you mean? Is he going to do it with his hands, with his legs, with his head, with his elbow, with his, what, what is he going to use? It lets you think about it, and then you get scared on your own imagination. That's how it is. That's why people are afraid of the dark. They start thinking of stuff. They're not there. I mean, if you Im immediately will turn, let's say you're left in the woods, in the woods, as a child, and why are you afraid? Because you start imagining movies, movies you watch that you were not supposed to watch, stories you heard that you were not supposed to hear. And you imagine that things were going to come and get you in the night. But if you could, you know, in the woods, in the dark, and if you could just turn on the light somehow, you know, the make light, you want to realize that just freaking trees and plants. That's all, and air, and that's it. Nothing that you imagine. You know, imagine it's a daylight. Why do you think it's the nighttime? Do you think the evil guys are showing up only in the nighttime? Why would they? Oh, because the story goes like that. So you know the story, you start being afraid, and you imagine all kinds of guys attacking your things. The same here, consequences. Oh, what are the consequences? Oh, you're going to find out. <laughs> so this is the, the basic psychological uh, uh, way of doing things, threatening someone. Russia's foreign ministry, or don't do anything. If you don't react, you don't react, you don't react, they're going to lower their guard, lower their guard, and they're going to keep forward, come forward, and it's going to be easier for you to them up. So, Russian Foreign Ministry warned Thursday that if United States confirms reports that it plans to deliver sophisticated air defense missiles to Ukraine, it would be, quote-unquote, another provocative move by the U.S. That could prompt a response from Moscow. My question is, what kind of response? Are you going to hit United States of America? Are you going to hit, uh, I don't know, London? Are you going to hit Kiev? Are you going to use uh, nuclear weapons? What are you going to do? Are you going to fuck up the whole country again with uh, destroying the whole thing? Uh, you know, with uh, destroying their infrastructure? What are you going to do? Let's you think. Now, 
Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova, a very intelligent woman, I gotta tell you that, said in a weekly, I mean, put her with uh, whatever Karine Jean Pierre of the United States of America or the other one, the Ragdoll, what's her name? Uh, Pfft, Psaki, Jack, whatever her name is, Jack, Clean, Jack, just whatever her was name, uh, Psaki, you remember that one, the red haired uh, woman. Oh my god, those are dumb as the rock. But anyway, but we are the good ones and they are the bad ones. Oh, she's evil. She's intelligent, I give her that. And knowledgeable compared with our teenage uh, giggling tards. Anyway, um, Jen, Jen, Jen Psaki, Jennifer, Jennifer. All right, <laughs> ministry spokeswoman Maria, she identifies as a woman, by the way, uh, Zakharova. Ministry, a uh, third time, ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said in a weekly briefing Thursday that, the, and I'm quoting, the US, US has eff effectively become a party to the war in Ukraine, following reports that it will provide Kiev, Kiev with Patriot surface to air missiles. The most advanced the West has yet provided to help Ukraine's military repel Russian aerial attacks. Uh, and what would that mean? If you're part of the war, it means that it's a fair game to hit uh, Washington, D.C.? Or what? What, what? what does that mean? I mean, we knew, I, I, if I would be Russia, I would have considered the first blanket that was sent, maybe not blanket because it's a little bit too <coughs> extreme, the first bullet that the Western countries, whichever that was, sent to Ukraine, I would have considered that country as a uh, active participant in the conflict. Remember, it's like you fight with your neighbor or you fight with another country, boom, 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 and you think, oh, that country is going to run out of bullets, and then I'm going to go and do this and do that. Regardless if you are in an offensive war or a defensive war, you hope you do your calculation based on their ammunition, on their weapons, their personnel, their locations, and many, you know, all that. And then you say, okay, I'm going to eventually beat them because they're going to run out of uh, capability of replenishing their, you know, uh, weapons. And all of a sudden, the other neighbor provides him with weapons. How should I consider that the other neighbor? As a friend? He's not a friend, is he? No. Is he neutral? No, because he's helping him to kill me. So that means what am I going to do? I have to take care of the neighbor. Now, how can I take care of the neighbor? I have the means? Of course I have the means. Should I do it? No. Why? Well, that's why you look at the Russians as being the criminals, the war criminals, the terrorists, the crazies, the, all that, but they don't retaliate with, with, with this one. I would have retaliated because that, that country or that neighbor is nothing, is nothing of being my friend. He's not my friend and he's not neutral. How can it be neutral? What am I going to say? If you send that again, I have to do something about it. What am I going to do about it? Blow it when you send it over there? No, there's not. Anyway, but that's the, how the Russians, the evil Russians did it. So I don't know. They know best, I guess. Zakharova added that the growing amounts of US military assistance, including the transfer of such sophisticated weapons, and I'm quoting, would mean even broader involvement of military personnel in the hostilities and could entail possible consequences, end quote. Did you hear that? So the Russian says, because you provide this kind of weapons, you provide the personnel as well. And we know that. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's not me saying that, the first person here on the planet Earth. You want to listen to uh, retired colonel, U.S. Army colonel Douglas McGregor? He says the same thing about HIMARS. He said the HIMARS are not operated by the Ukrainians. They're contractors. NATO contractors slash U.S. contractors. He said you can't train the Ukrainians in three weekends to operate the HIMARS. And again with these guys with Patriot. And I'm going to tell you how many people, the personnel is needed to operate this um, uh, Patriot systems. It's not like five guys or a driver over there delivering uh, goods somewhere in the neighborhood or an Amazon guy, delivery guy, no, or woman, <coughs> my bad. Anyway, or, or why did I mention, you know, something that would be like a gender here? Anyway, Zakharova added, yeah, that exactly she did. And she says that would mean even broader involvement, broader, so it's already there, involvement of military personnel would mean even broader, so they are already there, in the hostilities and could entail possible consequences. She did not specify what the consequences might be, but we <laughs> can only imagine. The thing is, the Americans say we have over there advisors, 
military advisors like they had in Vietnam. Remember those military advisors? <laughs> yeah, they didn't have any weapons and were not involved. All right, and that's one advisors and they have those guys that are checking to see inspectors they're checking to see where the weapons are going you know they are, they are delivered to ukraine and now after about eight months it was when they first sent them about 1000 last time i checked just to you know nothing no no involvement in whatsoever please guys please now we find out a patriot battery can need as many as 90 troops to operate and maintain it 90 troops, Ukrainians, all of them. And for months, the US was reluctant to provide a complex system because sending forces into Ukraine to operate it is a no starter for the administration of President Joe Biden. So you see, they say here, and this article is what? From Associated Press. They here um, confirm that sending those Patriot uh, miss, uh, missile systems, defense, air, blah, 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 they will have US personnel right here. For months, the U.S. was reluctant to provide the complex because sending the forces into Ukraine to operate it is a non, non, no starter, non starter for the administration. But now it is a starter. All right. Yes. Yet concerns remain that even without the presence of U.S. service servicemen to train Ukrainians on how to use the system uh, 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 deployment of missiles could provoke Russia or risk that a fired projectile could end up hitting inside Russia, further escalating the conflict. That's not what it is. I mean, the HIMARS are hitting targets in, uh, in, Ukraine, in uh, Russia, aren't they? And who did what? Even before reports emerged on the delivery of Patriot systems, Dmitry Medvedev, deputy head of the Russian Security Council, which is chaired by President Vladimir Putin, warned that if Patriots enter Ukraine, quote unquote, along with NATO personnel, they will immediately become a legitimate target for our armed forces. That means we're going to kill your boys. That's what basically says. Well, what if they send uh, 3,000 of them and just, uh, you know, pushing it to extreme? Are you going to try to hit all those 3,000? What if you can't hit those, uh, those 3,000? What if they're going to push you back because of those 3,000? What are you going to do? How are we going to stop the flow? As I said many times, if you have a broken pipe, a water pipe in your uh, house, what are you going to do about it? Or hose, however you call it. You're just going to use uh, towels to get the water and sh sh and bring, hey, you guys bring more towels. We need them. Sh sh or, you're gonna, or are you going to fix the freaking hose or the, the pipe, water pipe? I'm going to go and try to fix that water pipe. In the meantime, these guys are going to make sure that the water doesn't you know, expand in my house. And I'm going to fix that. And that's it. How do you fix that? You have to stop the, or you go downstairs and you turn off the, uh, you know, uh, in the basement turn off the water supply from the city or wherever you got it and then you stop it and then you repair it. So how do you stop that? The Americans are sending weapons. How do you stop that? It's tricky because that means you have to do something with the Americans and those guys. And we go again to, to uh, square number one. As I said before, you provide one bullet to those guys, you're part of it and I'm going to get crazy. But you have to get crazy, otherwise they, know, they say, well, Another, another red line that we crossed and you didn't do anything. <laughs> Just a wuss. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.